Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Our precious Father, we thank you this morning. We invite your presence to come and teach us on what we have to know in your word. Make this word to be a light unto our paths through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today is Sunday, the 20th, December 2020. And our Bible reading is Romans chapter 1. But we are going to be taking it from verses 1 through 7. Romans 1, 1 through 7. Paul, a born servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born to the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him, we received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations. For his name, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. When someone is saved, it means that the person is free. It means that the person is being redeemed out of the consequences and bondage of sin. One is saved, and when the person is saved, it is expected for him to serve others. Viewers, it is based on this premise we shall this morning be considering the topic that says saved to serve others. Saved to serve others. From our Bible reading, we can see Apostle Paul introducing himself as a servant of our Lord Jesus Christ, set apart for the gospel. St. Paul recognized that one of the major reasons by which he was saved was for him to preach the gospel. Paul recognized that it is his duty to draw souls, especially the lost souls, unto the Lord and preach this gospel so that people will hear and know all about Christ. Viewers, we have been called to be distinguished. We have been called out of darkness into God's own marvelous light. And therefore, we have this message to preach. We have this message to proclaim. And we have this gospel to preach in order to draw souls unto God. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. The Bible says that the necessity has been laid upon me to preach the gospel. And woe unto me, woe unto you, if I, if you, preach not the gospel. What does that scripture mean? It means that whatever thing we have to do is for us to tell people about Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God is not meant for you and I alone. Remember Jesus said there are many mansions over there. So our duty is for us to accommodate a lot of people. And the only way we can do that, as you have been saved, is to serve others, telling them about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we at this point ponder and ask ourselves the question, 
how many people have you preached to since January 1st this year till today? How many souls have you won for Christ? How many people have you led to God? Are you preaching the gospel at all? If the answer is not positive, then you have a great tax to start today. You can start from that your family. You can start from your neighborhood, in the bus, in the taxi. Witness for the Lord. Tell people about this Jesus Christ. Let sinners see and hear you and be converted. Because that is the reason why you are saved, for you to serve others, to lead them to Christ. Friends, when we do that, I can assure you that we are merely letting the people and the world know that in Jesus and in him alone lies the fullness and abundance of life. Therefore, go out there, sing the alarm, Ring the bell that Jesus can save. We need to tell the fornicators that Jesus saves. We need to tell the liars out there that Jesus saves. We need to tell the idolaters, the murderers, all those people, the adulterers, all the, the people that are committing one sin or the other, we need to tell them that Jesus saves. We also need to tell our politicians who engage in graft and theft, who engage in primitive accumulation to change their ways. We need to tell them people that make empty promises only for them to get into the office and become monsters. We need to let them know of the truth that only Jesus can save. And there is no life in that kind of life they are living. The only way we can do that is to witness for the Lord. Remember, a sinner cannot preach to a sinner. The Bible was posing the question, can a blind lead a blind? Certainly not. Both we fall into a ditch. It is you and I that have been saved already that is duty bound to serve others to tell them about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. But let me say this at this point. As we witness for the Lord or we want to serve others, let our character reflect what we preach. Oh, Charles Spurgeon was very right and correct when he says that the life of a Christian is just like a mirror by which the sinner sees and becomes converted. Oftentimes, you would not speak in, your character can even do more than the one you are speaking. I can tell you that when you say you are a Christian, you are a believer, people are looking up to you. People want to be like you. And therefore, sinners should be able to look at our lives and we convict them of their sins. That is to say, for sinners or for you to feel comfortable around sinners is an abomination. We should try as much as possible to live what we preach and to preach what we live. As long as we are alive, we have this gospel to proclaim and we have this message to preach. The message that Jesus saves. The message that only Jesus can give us life and give us that life more abundantly. And therefore, there are three things you need to do this morning as you leave. Number one, preach the gospel. Number two, preach the gospel. And finally, number three, preach the gospel. When you do that, I can assure you that heavens will be happy for you. And on that last day when he'll be revealed, when we shall see him as he is, our Lord Jesus Christ will be able to say, Come 
to my father's paradise and have a rest. We are sorrow will not be there, but joy all the day long. May we bow our heads in prayer. Father, Lord, we thank you this morning for reminding us the need for us to go out there and witness. Give us the grace and give us the power to always listen to you and do that which you have commanded us to do so that through our work, people will glorify you who is in heaven. This is our prayer this morning. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. To alert the sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. 